Starting us off tonight will be Mr. Michael Jackson. Good evening, Mr. Jackson. Please remember to state your name and address, and you will have three minutes. My name is Michael Jackson. I live in Neverland Ranch. Good evening, Flower Man City Council. I know you know who I am. I'm the king of pop, a.k.a. Michael Jackson. I'm also one of the top Michael Jackson impersonators in the DFW Metroplex. Hey, hey. But I'm here on behalf of Michael Jackson's Legacy Coalition to speak out and denounce the recent behavior of Rabbi Shmuley. Now, you may or might not know this, but I had some spiritual guidance during one of the toughest moments of my life when I was facing a very serious criminal allegation of sexual molestation. And this man came to my defense. His name is Rabbi Shmuley. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's one of the most famous rabbis in America. But recently, he has been perpetuating negative stereotypes of the Jewish people by wearing a prosthetic nose. Have you guys seen this? All the, all the tropes of Judaism he's trying to make fun of, which I stand against. So Rabbi Shmuley, I denounce you. We denounce you, Rabbi Shmuley. And I just want to make it clear that I was friends with Rabbi Shmuley before he had a kosher sex store with his daughter, before he sold kosher lubrication and kosher uh, sex devices. So I just want to make that clear. I used to be friends with this man and not the man that he became shortly thereafter. I also want to say that I stand with Candace Owens. I think that she was right and she did not deserve to get fired. I want to say this, that this is very important, that I want to cease fire in Palestine. I stand with all the children, and I believe no children should starve. Don't be ignorant. He, he, he. I love my Jewish and my Palestinian children the same. But I must also bring attention to the recent court case against my estate. I don't know if you're familiar with the false allegations, Brian, but I've been accused of select, selectual molestation against a young, two young boys named Wade Robinson and James Safe Chuck. And they came out recently in a documentary and said that I touched them. That is provably false. First of all, Wade Robinson, the, the lead in that documentary, he testified on my behalf twice in front of California's top state prosecutor as my lead character witness and never said that I touched him. But then conveniently, when he was not hired to be the lead choreographer of the Cirque du Soleil Ma Michael Jackson show, he shortly thereafter decided to say that he was molested by me. Now, the second accusee is James Safechuck. He says that I molested him in my Disney-style train house. That is provably false because the architect had not even drawn the plans. So I must say that even though I'm accused of some of the most repugnant things in the world, World. I know that's true, but nothing that I've done is as disgusting as Rabbi Shmuley twerking on his children. So I just leave you with this. Rabbi Shmuley, you ain't my rabbi. No, 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 you are not. And I didn't touch any boys. No, I didn't. I never pulled their pants off. Never touched them. Mr. Jackson, your time has expired. Uh, all right, just want to say, I denounce you, Rabbi Schmidt. Mr. Jackson, your time has expired. Kids. I love you. So refined, I got no time for no games. Ask yourself why would I make time for you lames? At all costs, cause I'm a boss. I'm a break them off, yeah, gotta break them off. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Prime Time with Alex Stein. I'm your host, Alejandro Stein, and we got a great show like usual for this evening for you. We got the one, the only super chef, Andrew Gruel, to come on, and we're gonna do a live cooking demonstration for him and teach him. One of the most classic recipes in all of literature history, green eggs and ham with a little prime time twist, green eggs and plant-based ham. I have my co-pilot, Brandon, on the stove this evening. Brandon, how are you doing this evening? Doing good, Alex. Happy to be here. We're going to you know, cook up a little something delicious. It's going to be really good. Yeah. Extra green dye. We want extra food coloring. Yeah. Show them that. That's the secret ingredient. And you're going to use green, but maybe, maybe a little bit of yellow, too. A little yellow, maybe, maybe a little, little, little just, red, get crazy. Go cra Actually, let's go crazy. Go yeah. stupid. Ah, <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Um, but before we get into this cooking demonstration, we have to talk about what the heck is going in Taiwan. Did you see this, Brandon? I did. It's pretty crazy, right? That's a, I've been in, been in L.A. I've gone through quite a few earthquakes. 
That was a, that's a pretty bad one. Well, you know, the buildings in Los Angeles, the newer buildings are built on rollers mm -hmm. so that they don't topple over. You know, what's funny is at my elementary school, they rebuilt one of the buildings while we were there. And that was like one of the things they talked about is it was earthquake safe. I know. Yeah. In Japan, uh, is Taiwan in Japan or is that, where is Taiwan? Taiwan's in China. Well, this is in China or this is in Japan? Ta ta Taiwan is a country off the coast of China, but China sure? claims it as its own. Well, it depends who you ask. John <laughs> Cena or China, they think Taiwan is just part of China. But Taiwan thinks they're a separate country. You can't see me. I'm John. I'm Team John Cena. I'm, I'm, I'm riding with China. I mean, uh, Xi Jinping, that guy would mess me up, dude. Well, some of the videos that came out of there were pretty insane. These are Thai. This is from Taiwan. 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 That's where they make a lot of the uh, fake Louis Vuitton and Gucci that I buy. Mm -hmm. That's where they have the child um, labor slave uh, shine. You know, shine the women's clothing mm -hmm. line. That's made by child slaves. Oh, that's so fun. We got our fake Jordans, isn't it? Yeah, we got fake Jordans in there. We yeah. got a lot of fake stuff. We got fake Rolex, fake Apple Watch. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if this iPhone is real, to be honest. But it doesn't matter. Oh, guys, and make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the like button. All you trat rats, because tonight we are going to do the dance. And when I talk about the dance, I'm going to no pants dance. I'm going to be literally eating green eggs and ham for you. And this dye is not safe. Is it safe, Brandon? Probably not. I don't think any food dye is uh, safe. We got the extra bad for you one, though. This is yeah, super Alex, bad. do you want to watch the videos? Of earthquakes? Yeah. Let's do it. Is it just Taiwanese earthquakes? Just Taiwanese. This specific Taiwanese this earthquake. This one's fun. Look how bad the cars start rattling. Oh, that looks pretty bad. It's like you've had too many beers. They're getting off the ground. Now it's calmed down. Oh, now Look at it's the bus. Up. See, I was in, you've been in an earthquake, right? Because you've been in a handful, yeah. I've, yeah. Been, I've been in one. And it is weird watching this video because I do remember the walls like bending like that. Yeah, it was weird. I was walking to the liquor store and one hit, and I felt it was a big one. I felt the ground start moving while I was walking. It was disorienting. It's weird oh, that there's that much flexibility like in the and road. Then, so this was the building that fell over. Oh, 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 oh. What the heck? Yeah, dude. I wonder if the EPA would say that that dust is safe. There's probably no uh, uh, asbestos in that at all. Well, it's Taiwan. I don't think they have an EPA. Do they not have an EPA in Taiwan? They don't follow rules and regulations in Taiwan? What is this place? I've never even heard of this place, Jimmy. Are you sure this is a real place, Taiwan? <clears throat> it depends who you ask, but they think it's real. Wow, I'm starting to, are you sure this isn't AI generated? Because you use AI for all kinds of gimmicks and, and pranks. Is this real, Jimmy? Um, you know what, that's a good question. Is that question. guy watching our show? Is he watching our show on YouTube, Jimmy? Is that where you're showing this? Oh, I should have Photoshopped that in. Damn. Yeah. That would have been a good idea. That was a missed opportunity. That that's was a me. huge missed opportunity, dude. Damn it, Jimmy. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Michael Scott, Wayne Gretzky. Why aren't you taking more shots, Jimmy? Uh, because I stopped drinking on the job. Is that really true? Just for today. Go find to... some alcohol. Go find a, some of Chad's alcohol right now and chug uh, some. Okay, well. Hurry, We hurry. have to do the ad read and I have to do the little thing. But I'll do it after the ad read. How about okay, that? Okay, yes. All right, guys. Born of a desire for a bold coffee and a need to build companies that actually support American values, Cash Brew Coffee provides an alternative to that faceless eco-corporate system that we hate giving our money to. And it also fosters a parallel economy that actually supports freedom. You can try my own personal blend, Alex Stein's Primetime Grind. It's a dark roast, 100% organic ground coffee with two times the amount of caffeine. It's the strongest coffee known to man. And you know who would love to have some Cash Brew Coffee? Joe Exotic! My man hasn't gotten laid in six years and needs some energy. Maybe we can send him some cash brew in prison. Jimmy, why would you say that? We haven't even played the Joe Exotic clip yet. How would they know that he hasn't had sex in six years? It's kind of uh, foreshadowing. It's a continuity issue! Just visit cashbrew.com. Use promo code PRIMETIME to save 10% off your purchase. That's cashbrew.com. Promo code prime time. And we should probably, maybe, I don't know how we include that, but we should maybe, you know, put a little cast brew there if we add a little. I'll figure it out. Yeah, oh, maybe coffee infused. Here, actually, yeah. Is this where you're gonna With cook the, the ham, ham or the eggs? With a ham, probably. That's All right, probably... should we get the ham going? Okay, well, I guess so let's start the cooking demonstration. And now, we're, before we bring on Chef uh, Gruel, let's, uh, let's show Brandon, our culinary artist at work. Okay, now come over here, Nathan, if you can. I'll get behind you, Brandon. What's in this ham? So this is a little 
twist on your uh, traditional ham that is made from swine. Everybody knows that um, <coughs> in my uh, family, we don't eat uh, animals. We only eat plant-based products, except uh, for our cats. Our cats eat meat. Look at the color. I know. What do you guys think about this, Jimmy? Do you think that's an odd color for ha fake ham? Yeah, but it's fake. So. Jimmy, Alex asked me what color ham is supposed to be, and I said, well, pink. And this That's is uh, debatable, not honey baked. This is this is brown. Honey baked, the outside that, is a brown sugar That looks coating. like dark peanut butter. Well, it's going to be green here in a second. All why? Right. Tell them why. All right, we're going to add some okay, delicious. Okay, come in, Nate, so we can see some delicious green dye. We're going to add this per the recipe. So you put this in here. You want a little extra in there? The extra green, right, extra green. That's my favorite flavor. Save some for the eggs. Ooh, look at that. It looks like a witch's brew. Ooh. Mmm, that smells delicious. Yeah, just do like a two or three pieces. Let's save some for Chef Gruel. Ooh, and look how it just goes in there, how easy it goes in there. It just slides right in. You want to taste some of it raw? Uh, no, let's just have it when it's save. green. And then, guys, because we need a little caffeine with our plant-based ham, we put a little... Just a right? sprinkle. Just a, yeah, a lot. But not just a sprinkle, put a lot. You know, why not? Because I love that coffee yeah, let's infusion. Get, let's get crazy. I need the caffeine. Also, let's not forget, the eggs, the most important part. I use the healthiest liquid egg substitute known to man. Uh, Lucerne has been in trouble for their um, the way they treat their animals. They've, they've been, the chickens? <laughs> yeah, they've actually faced a lot of heat because they have been, you know, uh, basically abusing them. I don't want to say that, but yeah, they have. So I interject, but did you see the chicken farm in Texas the other day? That you got bird flu. Down? Bird flu. That's not good. No, that's why we went with the substitute. Oh, speaking of bird flu, can you please put on your cooking mask? Oh yeah, excuse me, excuse me. Yes, thank you. We gotta. Guys, we're doing a cooking demonstration. We got to have a little sanitary, a little safety. Yeah, okay, you know. so we're just going to let this boil, and then um, I guess you don't have to cook it, but why don't you just scramble them up in the bowl so you can show the people how. This is an old family recipe, and it's, it's a it's a two-ingredient recipe. You buy the liquid egg, egg substitute, probably not from Lucerne, because that company's doing a lot of bad stuff to animals. Oh, God. Mmm, look at that. It's already blended up. Mmm. Mmm, mm, that smells like, kind of smells like gasoline or... Plastic a little. Uh, kind of smells like bad milk. Ooh, look at the coffee grounds all over it. Okay, now what do we do to make it green? Hit it with a little green dye. You ain't gotta be artsy Ooh, with it. Ooh, that's here. easy peasy. Taiwan easy. Come here, we'll whisk it up a little bit. Oh my gosh, that looks delicious. Mmm, yummy. Can you guys see that? Look at that. Jimmy, we are gonna make this, you eat this. This is gonna be good. Oh, I'm gonna eat it all. This is gonna be really good. And uh, we have my favorite chip, a little Takis to help wash it down. So, I guess we can get back to the show. Yep, we'll and let this percolate for a few minutes and then we'll get the eggs going. Yeah, get it, I want it extra green. Maybe put a little hit of green, just just a little, a little extra. More. Just we'll a little, I mean, don't don't run out of it. Yeah, never too much. You can never put too much green dye in your food. <laughs> Trust me, Super Chef Bobby Flake training. I think technically you can. What do you mean technically you can? I mean, if you put too much green dye, it could really mess with your internal dude, organs. Dude, you sound like a cop, dude. Shut up, Jimmy. Yeah. Oh, you're worried about my internal organs? Whose internal organ had a heart attack recently? Mine. Yeah, these yeah, fake exactly. eggs are heart healthy. These are heart healthy. Yeah. yeah, so I know about internalization, and I know what's good for me, I know what's bad for me. I know this green dye is healthy, it's zero calorie. There's no calories in this green dye. Mm -hmm. You can add as much as you want to it, you get great flavor, it looks great, feels great. What does it taste like? What's the flavor? Uh, I would say Open your mouth. mint, or a little... <laughs> I hate it, like, I'd say it tastes kind of like a shamrock shake. Okay, I can't argue with that. What? I can't. Ar oh my god. What? Dude, it tastes you look delicious. <laughs> what? You, you look like the Green Goblin. Ah, no, I better not look like the Green Goblin. Okay, let's just, uh, golly, let's what? get into the Kanye Jimmy, allegations. Jimmy, what's wrong? I don't know why you're acting like this. Oh, man. Yeah, when you got. Now, I did not give oral sex to a leprechaun, you <laughs> asshole. Do not say that into my ear. Oh my God, my teeth are green. That's disgusting. I kind of like it though. I hear okay. like Beetlejuice. We do have an ad read after <laughs> this, so this should be interesting. That's a hair. Buy some cast brew coffee. It's so good. Ah, I love it. Mmm, cast brew coffee. Is that the ad read? Uh, no. <laughs> It's pure health, but we have to get to the Kanye allegations first. Don't puke into the food. It's, I hope this won't stain my tie or my clothes, will it? <gasps> it's all over my shirt! 
That's a shame. What the hell am I going to do? Wait, wait. This is one of my favorite shirts. Does this stain, Jimmy? Hey, I, if you're serious, I have an ice cube. That'll get it out. Yeah, Give me an ice cube, Jimmy. Hurry. What is this? I, you're about to do a wet t-shirt contest. Get the microphone all dirty. Dude, what is going on, Jimmy? Hurry, 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 hurry. Yeah. Jimmy, what how do can you mean? do this? Rub, rub, rub. rub it on my nipple. Rub it on my nipple. Get it clean. This is one of my highest quality shirts, Jimmy. Hey, that's actually working. It actually yeah. works. Did it work? Yeah. yeah. Wow, Jimmy did something right. Just, yeah, there you go. Thank That's you. Get awesome. out of here. Get out of here, Jimmy. All right. So, did you see the most famous um, Nazi sympathizer in the world, Kanye West? Yeah, he's in a little bit of trouble again. He's getting sued, I think. He is. getting sued for workplace uh, harassment, I believe. That doesn't sound like Kanye. He seems very stable and very, like, normal. I know, right? You wouldn't expect that of him. Funny talkies. Oh, yeah, I'll take a talkie, even though this flavor Here. in my mouth is so well, good. Well, put it on screen and I'll read it because it's just so insane. Um, Kanye West is being sued for workplace abuse. Employee claims Ye threatened him by saying, I'm going to punch you in the face before abruptly changing tone, mimicking Super Mario's victory dance and saying, I'm going to give you one more chance, another life. Ye went on a rant about, ooh, uh, the bad guy's greatness Said the uh, Holocaust. About a painter in Austria. A painter the painter in Austria is fake, and said the Holocaust was fake. And then staff members came to the meeting to come watch the Batman on mute in silence. I just want to say the Holocaust was real. Me, that's thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Should um, we make Jimmy he, watch Batman in silence? We should make him watch Schindler's List mm -hmm. in silence. In silence, yeah. 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 He told employees if they got fat, they would get fired. You tell me that all the time. I, I, I it's more of a you get fired because you'd be deceased. Yeah, but still, you're fat shaming me all the time, so I can sue you. So you're liable for a lawsuit. Is that what you're telling me? I, I get technically, by the letter of the law. And you know John Gross, my attorney? Yeah. Do you want uh, uh, an attorney like that coming after you, Jimmy? No, no, no. Then I would start not. fat priding me, not fat. shaming me. So okay, you should be I will, proud of my weight. I will start fat priding you. Okay, two more. At Ye's Donda Academy, he allegedly wanted to introduce a jail where kids would be locked in cages. Ooh, we should do that to Jimmy, too. Yeah, I actually kind of like that idea. Yeah. Remember the cage idea we did have, and then they did it on Fish Tank? I know. They kind of took that, but it's all right. Jimmy, you remember how mad... Let's show a three-box real quick. We want to go back to this. But, Jimmy, remember I had that brilliant idea that nobody's ever had to lock a man in a cage on mm -hmm. set? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you shot it down. Well, because we had, like, a sweet Christian female guest who clearly did not know what show she was getting into. Well, um, Christians have been persecuted as well. So, I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I, mean, I think that, that's just, that's, what is it? Dude, that's smelling really good. That plant-based ham. It's made with a lot of wood glue. Yeah. And um, looks, Co coffee's just blending right in. It looks delicious. Okay. Uh, but then they put Dunye in a cage and they went quadruple viral. So you dodged a bullet, I guess, Jimmy. We did. Well, not me, because we didn't get the clicks. They got millions of hits. We got very little hits from that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes... <gasps> oh, the food does make... I'm about to puke, I think. Okay, well, let's go into the Pure Health uh, ad read, and then we'll get on our boy, Chef Gruel. <sighs> Did you read the last one of that, Jimmy? What? Last oh, one the last one? Oh, let's... Can you, uh, can you pull up? The last one's funny. Uh, yeah, the last one. Threaten to go after the LGBTQ plus community next because gay people are controlled by Bill Gates <laughs> so that they don't have children for population control. Well, that is that, that's factual, right? Wow, I've learned a lot from did these. You, did you, I, 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 there's a clip that says the only way to fight climate change is population reduction that Bill Gates said. Did you know that, Jimmy? I have actually heard that. Yes. You think it's weird that the guy that owns the most farmland in the world and has, you know, could literally shut all the farms down to make us all star to death? You think it's weird that he's interested in population reduction? Because honestly, I've never even thought about the population enough to even want to reduce it, right? I've never been like, ah, there's too many people. And I'm in traffic. I don't even like people. I like cats. Still don't want to reduce it. Isn't it weird that a guy that really wants to reduce that? Yeah, that's really weird. I am on board with you and Bill Gates and most of the conspiracies. Mm, finally, one freaking conspiracy. I showed Jimmy a, a building in Taiwan. He's like, oh, that's different than 9-11. Wrong. It's the same thing. Doesn't make sense. Those buildings, like I said, it's the pancake theory. Like, you know, mm -hmm. after 20 floors of implosion, at some point there'd be like a rubble that would block it and make it tilt forward. Instead of 9-11. Hey, Alex, I hate to cut you off, but yeah. Chef Grill's waiting on All us. All right, so let's, let's get your next guest. We have an ad read. What? Are you serious? Yeah, that's why I was trying to hurry you up.
Get liver help. Guys, I had a heart attack because I forgot to take my liver health formula. I throw everything in my liver. Cholesterol, Doritos, cash brew coffee, methamphetamine. So why do so many of us have a sluggish fatty liver? Well, and it makes us gain weight. That's why. And it makes us lose energy. So for decades now, your liver has helped you with over 500 key functions every day, like peeing. Oh, don't. It does help you pee, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's time to help your liver, not just pee. There is a solution, liver health formula. It's an all-natural supplement that helps recharge and protect your liver. So if you're looking to ignite your fat-burning metabolism, boost your energy, and transform how you look and feel, try liver health formula today. And when you do, you receive a free bottle of our blood sugar formula to reduce those sugar cravings, and that's when you order today. So if you want to look good in a tuck-friendly bathing suit, you need to try liver health formula Try Liver Health Formula by going to GetLiverHelp.com slash Alex and claim your free bonus gift today. That's GetLiverHelp.com slash Alex. Are the Get Liver Health people going to like that you ad-libbed all those stuff, Jimmy, about cash brew, methamphetamines? Is that? Yes, I was told to make it more, quote, Alex style. Such an idiot. Okay. All right. Now we welcome on legendary celebrity chef, restaurant owner, and overall badass, the one the only, Chef Andrew Gruel. Chef, how are you doing, my friend? Now can I not hear the chef, Jimmy? Are you there, chef? Oh, oh my God. No. We are just you, had his audio. You muted yourself. Are you muted? Yeah. No, he's not muted. <laughs> chef Gruel, we had this whole the cooking demonstration. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Jimmy! I know. I can't hear him either. We're trying to fix it. I'm oh, trying to fix it Jimmy, right now. Jimmy, you fucked it up! Jimmy, but we have a celebrity chef for once on this show. It's a cooking show. I know. I don't even speak. I know this. I'm going to give Jimmy this. You can't see it on camera, but I gave him a hand signal. Did you get that hand signal? I, I did. Gave? I got that loud and clear. And why is it, Jimmy, you can't ever do anything right on this show? Uh, you know what? I, I don't know. But how about this? Since we can't hear him, you display what you have cooking right now. No, we need to talk to the guy. Okay. What are you talking about? We need to hear his audio now. Are you sure you're not muted, Chef Andrew? No. All right, well, oh. let's pull out the green hand oh, while we figure that out. Gosh! Okay, all right. Uh, all right, we're having a panic attack. Well, Chef Gruel, you, you can't hear us. I guess, Nate, come over here. I think he can hear us. But we I mean, he can hear, hear us. We can't hear him. All right, so the, the ham has floated to the top, so I think that means it's done. Let's. So, Chef Gruel, if you're watching this, we wanted to create one of uh, my family's most precious and cherished recipes. And it's also Dr. Seuss recipes, but we do a little plant-based twist on it. This is what we call green eggs and plant-based ham. Now, what you have here is you have ham that has been soaking in some of the most delicious food coloring in the world. I love this stuff, Chef Gruel. I don't know if you use this stuff much, but uh -huh. oh, yeah. mm. Mm. it's so good. You put a little on your lips. It's almost kind of like uh, methamphetamine or cocaine. You feel, woo! It's really, I don't want to encourage anybody else to do that, but this is the green ham, right? Green ham. Plant-based ham made from the most delicious plants in the world. So we love lettuce. Now this, this is the kicker. This is the premier ingredient in the whole entire dish, right? Yep, we're going with the the main star of the show. Extra virgin olive Little oil. EVOO as they say in the biz, you know, cause gotta keep the pan clean. Okay, we're gonna put a little extra virgin olive oil. You know who's the extra virgin? Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy was a virgin until he got married, which is actually kind of, you know, admirable in itself, other than he probably wouldn't be a virgin if he could find somebody to actually sleep with him, which that's another story in itself. All right, Jimmy, why are you still, how do we not have Chef Gruel's audio yet? We're working on it. I'm All emailing right. him right now. All right, now. All right, we're gonna let that, that heat up for a second Why don't you guys here? hang up and recall the chef? Well. You take me out of the booth for one show. I know, you come up here to do a cooking demonstration. All right, Chef Gruel, we can see you. I guess let's just start making the dish so by the time we get them, we can actually eat it on air. So this is a little, ooh, look at that. What's this temperature at? Is that max? As hot as it'll go. Ooh, look at that. Look how green it is. Swirl that around. Dang. Let that. Let that fry up. That we're gonna just let that fry. Mm. Chef, we can't hear you still. Yeah, or maybe we should call him on the phone. Or, no, I just asked for his number, and then we're also we're trying to call him again. So worst case, we'll just call him from the phone. Okay, sounds good. All right. Uh, you, you know, guys, you would think it's our first show. It's not. We're almost on 200 episodes, but uh, at this pace, it might not be 200 more. So uh, make sure to like and subscribe Ooh, and that. share this. Ooh, look at it. Look how delicious that is. Extra green. Mmm. Mm. 
Ooh, that and this, sizzle. Look how green this is. And I want to make it, Chef, I, I do this, even though you cook it, but look at this, put this, a little, add a little extra, a little extra green uh, on there. It's St. Patrick's Day somewhere, right? Isn't that what they say? Ooh, look how good that egg. Hey, Chef Grill, if you can hear me, can you just email me your number? We might just have to connect on phone. All right. Um, Remember that silly putty you used to get as a kid? This is what it looks like. It yeah. does look like silly putty. I wonder if they and, use the same dye. Well, probably so. And a lot of these dyes are actually made from beetles. A lot of people don't know that Red 40, I think, comes from beetles. Ooh, look how delicate this is. And he's a great chef right here. He's not yeah. as good as you, Chef Gruel, of course. No. But he is a talented young man. We don't pay him. He just works because he's you know passionate about cooking, passionate about the culinary you arts. Know, I actually almost became a cook at high school. Why didn't you? Because they don't make any money. I know, and everybody, I wanted to ask Chef Gruel this, but in kitchens too, they're the wild. People act crazy. That's where everybody. Oh, yeah, the, the Mexicans in the kitchen I worked at taught Not me how to steal Mexicans. food. Not just Mexicans. Everybody uh, steals food and does drugs. Well, I'm talking about my experience. It, well, you were in a great the barrio. Coach, yeah, of the best. Are you kidding? That's why I actually like Venezuelans. I like hey, people. Hey, Chef, Chef Gruel, I just sent you the Zoom link. We're going to try that. Yeah, that's probably smart. Maybe you could have okay, done that. I just five emailed you the ago. Zoom link. Just try that. Um, Our Skype's being weird. We're uh, sorry. Mm. Look at that. Oh, that's going to be delicious if we can ever just get to try that. So I guess we're going to have to cook a second round of eggs. I guess we've yeah, got I saved, enough ham. I saved a second round for so, when we got the chef on. So you can just, whenever it's ready, you can just put that on there, I guess. You know, I see why Kanye treats his employees like he does. We should we should be meaner to Jimmy. Yeah, seems. we definitely need to be meaner to Jimmy. Hey, the chef, that, we can hear you now. Can we you can talk? hear him? Oh, now, of course, now he's frozen. <laughs> yeah. Well, folks. When it rains, it pours, that's, right? That's the beauty of doing a live show. Sometimes some mistakes are going to happen, all right? You got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Unless you're using liquid egg substitute, you don't have to crack any eggs. Or, you know, you're not going to have to worry about shells being in it. This is some of my favorite liquid egg substitute in the world. I'm telling you, this stuff, little green dye, you don't need anything else. It makes the most delicious breakfast that you can just enjoy, snack on through the day. If you cook mm. too much, you can make egg and ham sandwiches. It's just a way to keep the family in line and, and watching and cooking together. That's really the beauty of family. It's sitting down, making a delicious plate of some green eggs and plant-based ham. Doesn't get much more American than that. Am I, am I wrong? I think these are just about ready. I think they are too. Let's put those on the plate. Ooh. Ooh. I guess we didn't, we didn't get any silverware, did we? I did. I have a fork. Oh, we got a Fork! Look how good this looks. Oh yeah, I don't want to miss any. I don't want to miss any. Look how green this is. Yeah, then we just we take, a, take a little hockey. Yes, we need a little garnish on there. Oh my gosh, it's like a Christmas miracle. It's literally like a Christmas miracle. Okay, give me that fork. Oh, we only have one fork that's in the raw eggs. Okay, that's oh, yeah, yeah. Clean it in the in the ham water. All right, that looks good. Now, time for a taste test. Mmm, look at that. Mmm, mmm, that's good. Mmm, let me have a little talkie. Mmm, 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 mmm. Delicious, right? That was real good. Just like mama told me how to make it. Just like my mom used to make it, yeah. Mmm. Look at this, you get this delicious green ham. Mmm, mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Your stool is going to be fascinating tonight. Oh, my stool is going to be disgusting, but hey, it's not about how it comes out. It's about how it goes in, and this is delicious. Now a little ham and egg kicker. Look at this. Have you guys ever seen a person eat this green of food? Never. Mmm. Mmm. That's so good. Mmm. Damn. I got to say, it's a 9.5 out of 10. The only thing to make it a little better is if we had maybe a little yellow. A little yellow? Yeah, add a little yellow on there. Spice it up, just yeah. on the, on the I mean, top. It's good, but it needs a little... A little kicker? Yeah, oh, is that red? No, this one's yellow. Oh, is we, that... We got red in there, too. We can get a little oh, red. Oh, but it's actually red, even though it's a yellow dye. That's crazy. Mmm. <laughs> Look how good this is. Mmm. Look at that. A little yellow in there. You kind of mix it together. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You know, sometimes I do a little blue and yellow, a little Ukraine eggs. Oh, that's actually good. We should do that. Do we have blue and yellow? Yeah, we got blue well, and Chef yellow. Chef Gruel, make him some Ukrainian eggs. All right. Ukrainian style. Oh, you got to do the liquid substitute. A little more EVOO. 
Okay. Oh, I guess maybe you could put it on there and then I don't know how you're gonna do it, but yeah. make one batch of Ukraine I, or one of blue and one of yellow, maybe? One blue, one yellow. That Come makes sense. I coming think. up. Coming up. Damn, that was really good. I need this maybe one more talkie just to kind of wash my mouth out. Oh, we ate all the talkies. Great. I got another bag for you. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Such a delicious, great chip. Well, I wonder what. Let me let me take a step over here and see what the hell did, I heard him. I heard him. I heard Chef Gruel. Yeah, we got Andrew. Him. All right, I yeah. failed you. No, it's not you. We got it, Chef Gruel. It was Jimmy. He messed up. So you just missed it. We made one of my ancient family recipes: green eggs and ham. And I just want to show you this. I use extra green sauce, and it's it's mm -hmm. almost it almost. It adds such a good flavor to it. Let me, this is how I eat it. Mm, 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 mm. So good, Chef Girl. So which food dye is your favorite color? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm open anywhere between like food dye 10 all the way up to 1400. Yeah, we love red 40. That's my favorite. I love red 40. I put it in my Pepsi. I put it in everything. But we're gonna let, uh, what we're gonna do is we're making you a special Ukrainian style egg. Have you ever seen this done before, Chef Girl? Is now we're just gonna mix the yellow in there. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's gonna be I'm Vladimir Zelensky approved. Okay, now that we got you, now we can start the normal interview. Chef, super chef Andrew Gruel. I know that you at one point were a food judge, and you got. Uh, I wouldn't say you got canceled though, right? Or did you get canceled, Chef? I got a little canceled. A little canceled here, a little canceled there, but I'm back. If you're not getting canceled, you're not doing anything right. But you may not know that at one point I was trained by Super Chef Bobby Flay. Can we show that graphic? Yep, pulling it up right about Should be. now. Now you see this, Chef Gruel. Have you ever met Super Chef Bobby Flay? Uh, I think briefly in passing, but nothing. You know, we don't. We I've never uh, laid down with him. Well, I've laid down with him a lot. We slept together in that kitchen, not sexually, metaphorically laid down a lot of food in that kitchen, and. Let me just tell this quick story, and I told this on the air before, even though we're supposed to be interviewing you, I wanna let you talk, but he taught me a, a very, very important lesson, and I gotta give you the Cliff Notes version. I got eliminated from a show called Worst Cooks in America where he teaches bad cooks how to cook. I got eliminated a little too early. I went to the media, they interviewed me, and I complained, and I made fun of, I made fun of Bobby Flay. I got a cease and desist from the Food Network. They said, do not talk negative. You know, you were on his team. It basically proves that you lost, so it, you know, it ruins the show. If you do this, you could face legal ramifications. And they said, they even to add to injury to insult, they're like, and Chef Bobby Flay's really disappointed. He actually liked you, Alex. Even though he kicked me off the show, so you know, it's kind of how much did he really like me. But fast forward two years. I'm like, the show's over. I'm not even thinking, not even in two years, one year. I, fast forward, yeah, I'm not even thinking about the show. My dad calls me from North Park Mall. He said, get to William Sonoma right now. I think he's like in an accident. That's in North Park. It's like a few miles from my house. I drive straight there. There's a line around the door, William Sonoma. I'm like, Dad, what the hell's going on? It's a Bobby Flay autograph session for his newest cookbook. This is a true story. And my dad said, Alex, I want you to go introduce me to Bobby Flay. Andrew, I was scared. I was like, oh, my God. He's going to act like he doesn't know me. He's going to maybe, you know, just totally ignore me is what I thought. I thought he's going to be like, who are you? And I'm there with my dad, even though I was on the show with him for a month. Well, he was so nice and so gracious, Chef. He made me feel this big because he killed me with kindness. And that's when I learned it's like, when you're big like that and people come after you, the best way to get back at somebody is with kindness than being rude. So I just, that's my Bobby Flay story. Do you have one? I like that. I like that. I don't have a Bobby Flay story, but I understand how it's, what it's like to be made to feel small. That's why I'm, that's why I'm short. I was six, eight when I started in this industry. So, uh, that, that's a nice story though. That's a heartwarming story, but how'd you do on the show? I got like, kicked off. This is, and this is why I got kicked off, chef, because he, Bobby Flay, just, I hate to say, admit this too. During the casting process, looking for bad cooks, I'm not a great cook. I'm not like a cook chef like you. But I mean, I can I can turn on an oven. Everybody else on the show is like, they're like, what's an oven? You know, like literally, that's how, you know, like like they only thought a microwave existed, right? They didn't even know how to start a gas stove. Like, I at least know how to start a gas stove. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how to cook that well, but I, I know like the bare minimum, the basics. These people that are on the show, had no idea. So during the casting process, like, oh man, I really want to get on it. 
because it's like a trip to New York. You stay there for a month. You live there, and it was, you know, it was a popular. It was like on the third season, so it was just I wanted to get on it. So when I was chopping an onion, I purposely cut my finger, and I spilled blood everywhere. And I, I got a call that next day that said you're casted for the show. Yeah, yeah, it's always good to cut off a finger. I, you know, I'm, I'm not even kidding. I mean, I just nicked it, and they loved it. They were dying laughing when I was bleeding. And I'm like, is there a towel? And there's blood everywhere. They loved it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they put you up in a nice suite or no? Well, no, they put us in a rinky dink hotel and then we lived in a house with all these guys. And I had a guy, Dr. Bob, who had a CPAP machine. Him and I were bunk mates. We lived in uh, Brooklyn, Williamsburg in a like a um, townhouse, right? It had like four floors. And so a CPAP machine all night. <laughs> so I couldn't sleep at all. And uh, yeah, and we were competing to win like, you know, $25,000, I think the price was. But I learned a lot from Chef Bobby Flay. I learned though that, you know, cooking's hard. So why do you, why do you have such a passion for the culinary arts, Chef? Oh man, look, it's it's it's. I get to see hundreds and hundreds of guests every single day. It's a band of pirates in the kitchen. First of all, I'm absolutely crazy. Uh, not <laughs> on a level like you're, you know you you know. There's intelligence is just the same thing as crazy. So you understand this, but the. Uh, Kitchen is a band of pirates. I mean, it's just a bunch of outcasts who realize that the only place that they can shine is in the kitchen. That's how I ended up there. And, you know, being who I am, trying to be the best at everything, I decided I would excel. But you got people in this industry who are struggling actors. You got people who are working a nine to five job and just need a little extra spending money. You got the housewife. You've got the young entry level worker. You've got everybody in this industry. And in that six hour period, that four hour period, however long service is, everybody's on the same page. So there's no other industry in which you can pull people together like that except jail. <laughs> wow. And they have to cook in jail. Well, why do you why do you stand apart from other chefs, Chef Andrew? Uh, well, number one, because I, uh, you know, go on shows like yours. Yeah, uh, well, you're two, famous. I mean, but I'm saying, well, you know, I guess culinarily, why do you stand out? Honestly, uh, because I treat my workers well, and I know that that's a huge kind of marching marching uh, orders from the left is like pro-worker, pro-worker. But the thing is, I'm like a free market pro-worker guy. So I've always been close with my team members, close with my workers, and that's got, garnered me a lot of attention. During the pandemic, when everything got shut down, we raised almost a million dollars, specifically for restaurant workers that were getting screwed by the government. And now you got the government coming around and they're like, the hell with the small business owners. We're the ones that you guys should be looking up to as your savior. Um, you know, people stay and work with me for De you know, over a decade because because of that, we're a family. And then from a culinary perspective, man, food is easy. You know this. If you were on the Bobby Flay show, it's not that difficult. All you need is a little bit of green dye 40, salt, pepper, <laughs> and some paprika. And, uh, and as long as your ingredients are high quality, then you're going to keep getting guests back. Yeah, but you know and this. The restaurant business is the hardest business. So tell me something about yeah. your failures in the restaurant business, Chef. Oh, man. I mean, you know, nine to five. What's your biggest horror sto restaurant horror story in the business aspect of it? I got two, right? So the first one is probably I was working for the Grand Teton Lodge Company, and uh, you know we were in a kitchen, and this these two guys were fighting. You had the one grill guy, and then you had the one pantry guy, and they were so mad. They were from different parts of Mexico, and they probably had some bad blood from a gang perspective. And Wait, so I was you're just telling me that they had car? You think they might have had bad blood because of the cartel or whatever? I mean, that's just deep. Yeah. Wow. No, wow. no, trust me. They they hated each other. And one day the guy finished making all of his salads and the grill guys weeded now, right? Because when the salad guy makes all of his stuff, he's done, then it goes to the main entree, the main course. So he was taunting him, right? Like, ah, oh, you look pretty busy. Looks like you're in the weeds. So he's leaning over into this guy's station. He's like, if you cross the line on that station one more time, I'm going to do something you're not going to like. And I'm in the middle of this and I'm like, come on, man, no, don't, don't do it, man. I'm just, you know, I just need to get paid. So the guy puts his hand on his cutting board, crossing that, you know, that line and the grill guy just takes his knife and just jams it right through the guy's hand. No, he and did I'm, not. And this is at the Grand Teton. Oh, this is at a nice hotel. This, this is a. Oh, this, well, this, this was when I was out west working for that company. I'm not going to name where I was yeah, working that's specifically. Fine. This was outside of that. Uh, you know, because ever ever since the accident, I got to keep my mouth shut. But the uh, so the guy stabs the knife through the other guy's hand and. I don't know what to do here, right? So I just keep dropping chicken parm because no. we got out the door. Wait, so this guy's bleeding no. and you're still frying, deep frying chicken parm? <laughs> Shut up. Hey, you know what? I didn't know that I was going to get stabbed in the middle of all this. Maybe I'm collateral damage. <laughs> so, you know, this guy's screaming at the top of his lung. There's blood over the all over the cutting board. I'm dropping chicken parms left and right, you know, and I'm covered head to toe in egg batter. 
And, uh, you know, ultimately they shut everything down. You know, police come take this guy out. I have to clean everything up. So that's my first story. My second story was when I was cooking online. And uh, this was actually in the same general time frame. My fry cook shits his pants in the middle of service. So <laughs> they're done that. You know. <laughs> hell, I, hell, that might have been me in the past life. So he, yeah. he, he takes a number yeah, two a, during the middle of the service. Middle of service. It was like an oops, oops, I crap my pants moment. And <laughs> Joe Biden vibes. I'm, but this guy doesn't want to do anything about it. So he just keeps cooking. And I'm like, look, guys, something's going on here. Like, Wait, I don't know. Time whether it's out. Chef Gruel, you're telling me that this guy didn't want to run to the bathroom. He's like, no, I still got to throw this meat on the grill. That's disgusting. I, I don't know whether he thought it was just like a light squirt or what it was. But in any case, the guy craps, him, craps himself. And I'm like, we somebody who opened steaks or something going on. We can't serve the food. Something stinks. Nothing is right here. Mind you, I'm just a young I'm a young line cook. So ultimately, he's like, ah, oh, you know what? I, I, I crap my pants and just walks offline like nothing happened. Um, and, you know, I'm just dumping bleach all over the place. So, look, it's a crazy industry, man. You know, <laughs> yeah, and I'd say so. You got, you got people stabbing each other. You got people, you know, crapping their pants. So. Call me nuts. I'm, you know, I'm the, I'm the head of the pirate ship. You really are. You are a modern day pirate. Tell me this. What's the deal with that Wagyu? Everything's called Wagyu now. That's a big scam. How can they just call everything Wagyu? Yeah, it is. It is a scam. I mean, look, at the end of the day, this all stems from this Japanese beef where they would actually feed it a lot of beer and sake and a ton of grain and they would massage it so that the beef, the fat was supposed to get into the muscle and everybody loved that. So then there's iterations of this type of beef in America. Now they call it Wagyu. It's really highly marbled. I don't, you know, I've cooked it. It's fatty. It's great. You know, maybe have one ounce of it, but I wouldn't pay $80 a pound for it. I, uh, especially if you ever see a Wagyu burger on a menu, yeah, don't buy it because the fat's inside the meat. If you're grinding it up, why are you paying all the money for the fat that's now just ground up in the meat? Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's kind of redundant. Oh, it, Alex, can I ask? Can I ask? Yes, Chef Girl? Jimmy. Even though you messed up the interview and you didn't let his audio work, yes, you yes, can ask yes, a question. Yes, exactly. Even though you're probably so. Last so I don't know if you know this, but I am a connoisseur of edible bugs, and so okay. oh, this is real. Know. This is no, 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 real. real. I actually like these are the bugs. I ate it as a bit one time, but I actually love it. So I was just wondering if you would ever consider using edible bugs at your restaurants. No, I wouldn't. I'll tell you why. It's because it's only a matter of time before somebody. Most people don't know they're allergic to bugs. So bugs are in the same family as shrimp. So you got to figure, right? Like somebody's got a, a, a shellfish allergy or a crustacean allergy. They know it because they almost died once. Bugs, as an anachronoid, people people are allergic to that, but they don't know it because they don't eat it. So one day what's going to happen is a restaurant's going to think they're all avant garde. They're going to serve bugs. They're not going to put it on the menu. Somebody's going to choke, almost die or die. And then everybody's going to start getting sued. That's why I don't serve bugs. I'm suing Jimmy because he fat shames me, and that's smart that you don't uh, uh, serve bugs. What is the worst uh, allergic reaction you've ever had in a restaurant? Have you had a bad one with a, with a customer? Yeah we've, had, yeah, we've had shellfish allergies. Um, uh, we, we Actually, you know what? I'll tell you another one. So we had a lady come into our restaurant once. First time I, I opened, right? So I started Slapfish as a food truck back in 2011, and then grew it to 35 locations, sold it a couple of years ago. And it was our first brick and mortar location. I only had a couple employees and were slammed one day. And this lady comes in, must have been allergic to something that she ate, and she craps herself. I know I keep telling these stories. That's about a lot. There, there's a lot of people pooping their pants, Chef. What's going on? So, she, so she's, a, she's a patron at your restaurant eating she's the shellfish. She runs into the restroom, locks herself. She's in like a business meeting. This lady's wearing like a business suit. She runs into the restroom, locks herself in the restroom, tries to kind of clean it up, get some of it in the sink, and then she runs out of the restaurant. But because of the smell, we ended up having to close the restaurant. <laughs> and I go and I, so I, I what, one of the guys who's kind of helping like utility washing dishes, et cetera, I didn't ask him to do this. I would have gone in and cleaned it myself. He goes into the restroom to clean it up and it smells so bad and he sees the turds in the sink that he throws up. So then he comes out, he's comes out of the bathroom, he's throwing up and then somebody else comes who's working for us, goes and sees him throw up. It's the cliched chain reaction throwing up. So yeah, now I, I end up having to close for like two hours, sanitize everything, clean everything. I got staff now that left because they're throwing up because there was a turd in the sink. This poor lady locked herself in the bathroom. So I'm assuming she was allergic to something. I don't know what, uh, but 
you know, this is a dangerous business, man. I dangerous know. business. She's just crapping her pants like that. Wow, that is insane. Okay, wait, chef. Now we want to show you, we made this. Come on, Nate, let's bring the camera over here so we can show. This is our latest creation in support of the war in Ukraine. Brandon, can you tell them a little bit about this recipe? Yeah, so we have a little taki garnish here with some blue egg substitute and a little yellow with a hint of green uh, substitute for all the money we're laundering. And do you like to use, is liquid egg substitute, this is a lot healthier, right? Because it's a substitute? <laughs> Yeah, oh, the help the substitute teacher is always healthier, right? That's what I'm saying. That substitute teacher is fun. You watch Bill Nye the Science Guy. Okay, uh, let's try a little bit of this. This is for you, Vladimir Zelensky. Oh, hey, will you put? Uh but, but here's the thing: you're being really diplomatic because with the red, the blue, and the white, you know, you're moving into Russian territory there. Oh, Vladimir Putin, we're gonna get canceled now. Even though uh, Vladimir Putin, we do agree with a lot of his stuff, especially Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy loves Vladimir Putin, but hey, listen, I don't like to, I don't like to eat alone. I like to eat with, uh, you know, when you eat, it's always better to eat with somebody you love. So Brandon, can you hold this over your face while I eat this, like we're on a date? So this is my favorite Big Booty Latina, AOC. Hello, AOC. Thank you for cooking me this delicious food after a hard day at work, honey. Oh, you're welcome, Alex. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. Oh, I love you so much, AOC. Oh, I slaved away over all day. Oh, thank you for just, you know, not focusing on Congress and focusing on your hubby. Mm, I love you, baby. Mm, mm. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Mm. Mm. So what'd you do at work today, hon? Uh, you know, nothing really. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, Did just... you see John Fetterman? Uh, yeah. What's yeah. That? You know, he's still retarded. Okay, good. All right, well, this is how we roll play. It's still, this is actually pretty good. The blue dye... Tastes a little better than the red. Have you heard that one, Chef? I don't know. Is this sweet? I don't. I don't do the dyes, man. But I would if I was there with you. It's very well, sour. Very sour. We need to do a cooking demo together there. You know, you <laughs> and I in our bathing suits. Tuck friendly. Remember, tuck friendly. Yeah. That's me, tuck friendly. Yeah. If you can't tuck it, you can't cook. If you can't tuck, you can't cook. That's my one rule. I don't want anybody to have their genitals near the kitchen. I want you guys all tucked. Uh, AOC's tucking right now, right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. He always has to stay tucked at the kitchen. Okay, but Chef, wait, what is this recipe? This looks scary. We're doing a little purple eggs here, you know? <laughs> we might as well get the full color spectrum. What is the what is the white in there? That looks like... Well, some of the egg substitute doesn't mix terribly. Good, oh you know? my gosh. That's... AOC made this. So. This has Venom vibes. Okay, let's get back to Chef. So, Chef, before we let you go, we only got you for a few more minutes. Tell me this, though, when it comes to the world we're living in today, how can you help with food? I'm saying, you know, you're such a popular guy. I guess what is your... My goal is to, like, wake people up to the hypocrisy and stuff. Do I always achieve that goal? No, but, like, what is your goal? Because I think you're more than a chef. Yeah, so look, I think that part of the reason why there's so much division is because a lot of, a lot of the left, they actually don't even understand the idea behind the things that they're supporting, right? So when I use, I, I use food as a conversation piece to get the left to understand why smaller government is important. So anytime you're in a debate with somebody from the left, just break it down to food. They're the same people that wanna buy from the local farmer's markets. They're all granola crunchy hippies. They don't want the government to be able to ban them from buying the raw milk cheese that they love from their favorite French bistro. Well, guess what? The government is the one who's coming in and putting the Amish farmers in handcuffs for serving raw milk. The government and the overregulation of our food system is what's leading to the Western diet, which is killing millions of people, which is why they're saying we need universal health care. So if you start with the food, we can actually fix all of our problems and be one happy, unified country if we decentralize the food system, if we use food as the means by which you can introduce some region, reason and logic to the left and we all eat together, it's a beautiful thing. No, and you're exactly right, because during Occupy Wall Street, all the people that were five times vaccinated and wanted to close down, those guys were anti-establishment. They were anti-banks. And then come, you know, 2020, all of a sudden, all of those same people that you would have think that they would align with a lot of the people that were pro chore or, you know, anti-mask. I'm just saying you would have thought that they would be against the big government, but that's, that's the opposite. Like, it's very weird how uh, the hypocrisy yeah. that people have in their own viewpoints. 
Well, use the use the school system, right? They want big government running the school system and all the food that they're feeding those kids are junk. So you should have local chefs. You should have a local decentralized, unregulated food system feeding these kids. But they want the government to be able to control all of that so they have the money. So you just have to ask them, be like, do you want these kids eating crap? Do you support Tyson? Do you support these massive food manufacturers? No, we don't. Well, guess what? That's who the government's partnering with. Government is it's corporatism. So you got to think small government if you support the kids. Okay, now we got a couple of tough questions we ask everybody. But first tough question is not the normal one we ask. Did you know that in Pepsi and like a lot of Frito Lay products were derived from aborted fetal cells? I didn't know that. You didn't Did know not. that. Yes, you got to yeah. Google that. Look that up. Even Pepsi was uh, was derived. From, I don't know why aborted fetal cells would be needed, but I've always thought that's very weird. Okay, now we're going to ask you the tough questions. Okay, yeah. first question, Chef, was nine eleven an inside job? Yeah, I mean, I think that the government knows a lot more than they might tell us, but I wouldn't say it's an inside job. Okay, that's a diplomatic answer. Now, down to the next one. Answer this for real, because I know you're in the kitchen. I know you're with a bunch of guys. You. You know, Javier and Pablo, they're about their puffing joints and probably watching YouTube videos about the ice wall. They probably told you all about this, but the moon landing, 1969 through 1972, real or fake? Uh... You know what? Uh, I'm I, I plead the fifth on that one only ah, because he's been talking to the kitchen. You know it's fake, right? Oh, I, the reason I plead the fifth is because my kids see this. We we've, we've been talking about this every night before I go to bed, and I'm in the process of a big series of nighttime stories. Mm -hmm. And my answer could give away the ending. So knowing this is a kids show that you host, it is. I, I can't go there yet. Call okay. me back in a month. Yes, sir. I will. You're going to come in studio. And we're going to actually do a proper cooking demonstration. We're going to have you on all the shows because, as Chef, I, you know, I said, oh, Andrew Grill's coming on. Sarah Gonzalez. Everybody's like, oh, we want to get him on our show. And so, you know, the, you're really beloved here. Okay, now, last question. Is the earth round or flat like a pancake or pizza? Uh, I actually firmly believe that the earth is more like a hexagon. Okay. Well, I'll take it. I, that, I got one. Well, oh, yeah. Ask, please, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, very big on vibrational energy, and he believes that the slaughterhouses are making the meat uh, bad for you. Oh, let me fast. tell that. Let me explain this. Now, Go Chef, now it. you have to expose me. I didn't even want to admit this, because Chef Andrew, he's a popular guy. hes I don't want him to know my true being. Chef, you're not going to believe this, but I am a vegetarian. I eat eggs, obviously. I'm not vegan. I'm not even close to vegan, but I don't eat meat. Why, you ask? Because I watch those documentary Game Changers. I watch all these documentaries. But then the real reason... The real reason, the reason that put me over the edge, because I, I stopped eating meat, I kind of slowly, you know, phase it out. Hillary Clinton supposedly, supposedly drinks the blood of children called adrenochrome. It's supposed. I'm not saying she does it. That's a conspiracy. I don't even necessarily believe it. But adrenalized blood is real. And when the cows are factory farmed and they're slaughtered, that they do release adrenaline. So when I talk about vibrational energy, because you said woo woo, I'm very woo woo, that when the other cow sees its other friend die and you eat that meat and you go to McDonald's and one hamburger will have meat from a thousand different cows that were all mm -hmm. killed in a very sad way watching all their friends die, I think that meat is low vibrational. Now you kill a deer, that's great. I think that's high vibrational meat, right? Or like if it's farmed right, am I uh, am I homosexual? No, I, so, so, <laughs> so, so I actually don't think that's many steps from woo woo to reality. I think you're closer than you than you know you are because the inhumane harvest and slaughter of meat actually creates a horrible product. It's awful for just like in general, the psyche of the environment. I firmly believe that we need to change the way in which we harvest meat, produce meat in this country. Um, and when we do so, we're actually going to see a massive change in whether you want to call it kind of the vibration or the, the you know, the, the moral compass of America by way of the meat. No, you're right. And, and like I said, I'm not against meat. I have dogs. I have cats. I think we got to have meat. I, I'm saying I'm just a little woo woo. But I think that if we killed animals and I'm not even saying the kosher way, but like if you hunt a deer and you eat it, that tastes even better. Right. Or you catch a fish, you eat it. It tastes better. So. I don't know how we're going to do that. I think we, you know, we need food for people, so we're never going to stop factory farming. I'm not one of those PETA freaks. I want to stop that. But I do think our mental health and stuff would be better if we ate better food. And I think that's... Uh, you can you can actually stop... Fa we can stop factory farming. We can start supporting local farms and allow and deregulating the system so that you can do it on a local level and sell within a local community. And then, you, you know, there's not all this interstate commerce stuff. The government highly regulates it. Let me tell you something really quickly. Yeah. The book, The Jungle... 
by Upton Sinclair, which created like all of these regulations, was written by the largest meat packers and producers in order to create the regulations to push the small guys out so that they could centralize it. And, and they merged with the government. And that's why our food system is so disgusting and why people are getting so sick. Wow. It's the, I mean, that is fascism. When, I mean, it's like, you know, these corporate states, they, they, kill, they kill all the small business owners that would actually, you know, probably make good food and good meat to just sell us this Monsanto genetically modified crap. Okay, I guess, yeah. I guess actually one last question. Everybody dogs McDonald's. I love the fries at McDonald's. We know <laughs> it's not healthy, but are you, you're a chef. Do you ever go get a Big Mac? Do you ever go get a, a you know, a burger from McDonald's? I get the fries. The fries are the per the best fries in the industry, and here's why. And I just did a post about this. McDonald's boils their fries with a little bit of acidulated water first, then they flash freeze them, and then they fry them to order. So the you by boiling them, you actually don't make them greasy and heavy. You par cook them. The acid prevents the pectin from breaking down, and when you freeze them, the ice crystals are what creates that blisteringly crisp exterior on the fry. They've mastered it. They have mastered it. Even though they use chemicals to, you know, on the potatoes that I think the farmers have to stay away for like 30 days or something, but they sure as hell are delicious in that sweet and sour sauce. Chef, before you go, how can the people find you and support you? Uh, follow me on Twitter at, or X. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Follow me on X at Gruel. Follow me on Instagram at Andrew Gruel. You can find me on YouTube. I don't do too much on there, but at Andrew Gruel. Um, and then you can, uh, you know, Find me on Only Pans at uh, Andrew Gruel. I love it, Only Pans. This guy's a freaking genius. All right, Chef, we're going to talk to you soon. And I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. Jimmy's going to be fired when you come in studio, so you won't have to see him. So say goodbye to oh, Say goodbye bye, to Jimmy. Bye. It was wonderful. My last show with you, exactly. the legendary show. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Chef. Keep up the good work. All right, now let's have a little... Oh, yes, guys. We Pause for 10 seconds for station identification. A lot of you might not know this because we're on YouTube, but guys, this show is brought to you by Blaze TV, and I love this company so much. I'm honored and so thankful to work here. So I would really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to this show so that I can keep working here. Thank you. All right, now let's get to this delicious food. Now, what well, else? Wait, 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 wait. We have one more thing. Read the teleprompter. Also, we have a big announcement next week about potentially adding another episode every Monday night. If I can get enough of you chat rats to sign up with my promo code, The Blaze is gonna green light a show that I get to produce, not Jimmy, not Jimmy. Tell him you're not gonna produce it, right? No, no, no production from me. Who's producing it? You, Primetime 99. Just like I produced The Conspiracy Castle. Mm -hmm. Just like I produced that show without your help. That was a very successful yeah. show. Yeah, I didn't even know you existed then. Yeah, but I produced it by myself. You did. You and did a great job. And there's a lot less errors. It's very funny because mm -hmm. you would think I got you, a Princeton grad, working on this show. you think there'd be less errors than I could make. I know. You would think that. And Brandon went to BYU. I mean, you guys went to, and I went to LSU. Obviously, it's not on the level of BYU or, <laughs> or, or uh, That'd be crazy here. Uh, where did you go? Gaytown uh, University or whatever, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's not the mm -hmm. same as y'all's school. But uh, it's all about the underdog story, and that's why uh, I'm the top dog, because LSU, the Bayou. So if you guys want some more of the Primetime 99 Pimp on a Blimp, and guess what? Even though I'm producing the show, Brandon and Jimmy are still going to be around. Well, not Jimmy. Brandon will be around. I'll here. be on. Jimmy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy's, Jimmy's fired. Jimmy's fired. But Brandon will be on it. So if you guys like Brandon, make sure to watch the show. And Brandon, turn around. Model that shirt. You guys see that Pimp on a Blimp tee, guys. If you guys want to come to the show and do the meet and greet on April 26th in Austin, just wear one of these shirts and you're going to be able to hang out with Primetime, Brandon. I might let Jimmy go to that event as kind of like a, you know, like a goodbye gift. But other than that, uh, you can come insult Jimmy live. That should be fun for people. Actually. Yes. Or, yeah. or we could do something where they shoot you with a paintball gun, Jimmy. Does that sound good? No, oh, that sounds great. I would love that. Would you let us shoot you with a paintball gun to keep your, keep your job? Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. Jimmy, I love this there's job. kind of a stain around my nipple, though, still from the red green or whatever, the green 40. I, I mean, I acted pretty quickly. That was the one good thing I did this episode. Yeah, yeah, I know. But well, how did you mess up that audio so bad? Um, the, the, I mean, do you want the real answer or a funny no, answer? No, I don't want any. Have you ever said a funny I answer? Suck. Go I suck. get the That's, liquor. Where's the liquor that I told you? I, I, they, they took it away. I'm actually upset about that. Did you go try to look? And yeah, I did. Him? I literally did. Brandon, where'd they hide the liquor? I don't know. We'll just start drugging him without telling him. I know. That's what we're going to have to do. Our last dish here is a little, uh, it's for Jimmy. I call this 9-11 Yeah, eggs. come on, Jimmy. Come on, set. We'll have your last meal together come before here. we end the show. All right. Yeah, so, come on. So if you come, the, the talkies here represent the, the Twin Towers. 
<laughs> and then we have Building 7 over here, and this is the Pentagon. Ooh. Now, Jimmy, you see the terrorists came in, allegedly, and they knocked down our towers. Yep. Now, how did those towers knock down Building 7? Uh, fire. So you're telling me these two towers mm -hmm. just fell like this, but somehow this one fell down too? Mm-hmm. And then mysteriously, something flew into the Pentagon and there was no debris left. Yeah. Mm. How do you no residue. That? How do you explain that? And people said that they saw bombs and they saw that they saw mm -hmm. rockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, but it was a plane. Mm. But here, yeah, I'm hungry. Have, can I, yeah, can I no, eat yeah, it? Yeah, but here, have a little hit of this first. Okay. Actually, do green because green looks the scariest. Okay. Or I'll do the blue. I'll do a little green. Okay, okay. Okay, this is for you guys. Just a little hit. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, heck. Are your oh, why, oh, oh. why don't your teeth look like that? Put it in your teeth, Jimmy. Put it in your teeth. Cut it all your teeth, Jimmy. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. See, Brandon, you should do one. You oh, do a color. You do a color. Eggs. Oh my God, look how cool we look. Let's all get together real quick. <laughs> look at this, guys. This is our show. Now, Jimmy, eat some of the 7 Eleven eggs. <laughs> All right. Mm, delicious. Mm. So this is, okay, what is this again? That's plant-based plant -based green ham. ham. Uh -huh. mm. No, that actually tastes like ham. Yeah. Like a yeah. Or a little taki. Ooh, look at, get, mm. little taki, ooh, green little eggs. green eggs. Mm. A little green, a little red. Mm -hmm. A little mm. purple. Oh, purple, purple, purple. Purple, 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 all right, guys, this has been our show. Make sure to like, subscribe, and you know we end the show the same way every time with the freestyle finale. So, DJ, hit that beat. Green eggs and ham. We got Nate on that handy cam. Jimmy is fired. He is out of the show. Jimmy's a bitch, and he's got to go. Princeton is a bad school. They love pedophiles. Their most famous alumni was arrested for child porn. He was. Brandon loves to cook corn. Jimmy goes to school with child porn. It's different. It's disgusting. But Jimmy is fired. And I'm super, super tired. I think I'm having a stroke. Those eggs made me choke. If I lose my job, I'll be broke. So please like and subscribe. Also, well, if you I'm want me to stay out. And we have a Joe Exotic. We'll, we'll, we'll play the Joe Exotic either on a clip or tomorrow on the show tomorrow. So make sure to watch that Joe Exotic clip. Brandon, great job in the kitchen. Ooh. Ooh, peace. Good night, bitches. See you tomorrow.